All right, let's check out the example without the bank fee connected. We're gonna be using the sales receipts option. So this is not as common, but this is another way that we can go ahead and enter in any kind of revenue from the bank without the bank feed connected. And uh, in instances where this would happen would be, say we have every, every bookkeeping account must have the business bank account connected, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that we are connecting the online transactions feed to the QuickBooks online transaction feed. And sometimes that happens based on just owner preference. So let's get into that. So from the QuickBooks dashboard, we can come over here to plus new, select that. I want you guys to come down to customers. We aren't going to be doing the invoice right now. We do have an example for the invoices here in a minute, but let's go down to just simple sales receipt. All right. This is just pretty straightforward. We're going to go through and we're going to set up a receipt just like we would say if you were at a bake sale, right? And um, you remember those old uh, receipt, what do you call them? Little binders, little like receipt, one, two, three, holders that you can buy at like Walmart. I think they still have them where if you buy something, it's got a carbon copy. So uh, the customer gets the top receipt and then the business or the fundraiser committee gets to keep the carbon copy pink or yellow paper that comes with that little book. So think sales receipt in that sense, or, you know, when you go and you go buy a, some coffee, uh, at a coffee shop, they're going to offer you your sales receipts. It's the same thing. It's um, it's something that's already happened, and maybe we've seen it based on receiving the client's bank statement, right? Because they don't have their bank feed connected, so we're using maybe their bank statement or even a customer email, but some kind of source document that's showing us that this sale was created and um, re we received money for it. So let's just select the first customer that comes to mind for me. It's always Amy's Bird Sanctuary because I use the sample company quite often. I push tab and a good rule of thumb guys is that when we're working in QuickBooks so that we don't um, miss anything and we don't skip anything, we create good habits. We are going to enter in information just like we read. We read a book, right? From left to right, top to bottom. That's how we're going to work. And those are the habits that are help are going to help us become more efficient and more accurate as bookkeepers. So let's go ahead. I just like to use the tab button. It'll send me to every open field. And I'm actually going to just move my little face off of here so that I'm not blocking anything for the time being. All right. And as I push tab through this, I'm making sure again, left to right, top to bottom. Everything is as it needs to be. I'm going to use today's date, location to say, I'm going to leave everything there. All right. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit because I pushed tab. It brought me to the tags. You guys can use tags however you need to, if you need to. The difference between using this um, sales receipt and an invoice is that on the sales receipt, we can choose the payment method. So, and we can, I'm sorry, not just payment method, but also the deposit to field because this is something that's already happened. We've already received money, so this is reactive. Uh, they paid us, we could say, check cash, maybe Visa. I can't see if we have Visa on here, so I need to scroll down. There you go, Visa, MasterCard, we can do that. Fill in as much information as you possibly can um, to your workflow preference or your client's workflow flow preference. If there's a reference number there, if not, don't use it. Deposited to. We'll be talking about undeposited funds in a later um, section, but make sure that you're choosing the correct bank account or asset account if necessary. We're just going to go with checking products or service. Remember, this is what we are selling from our clients' sales inventory, whether it be actual physical inventory or if it's going to be something like services. We can simply put it here. I'm going to go with design services description. Maybe I might not put one in there. Maybe I will, depending on what I need. I'm just going to leave that blank for now for, you know, efficiency of this example. I don't want to bore you guys. The rate, let's just go with uh, $500. <laughs> All right. And there we go. Tax, not taxable. Remember that this should be checked if it's going to be something tangible. 
And how we're going to know that is by also having open conversations with our client. So we've received all this money, enter in whatever else you need to, um, and save and close. Now this sales receipt, let me just explain, even though it was not connected to the bank transactions, this sales receipt is now a manual transaction that we have put into QuickBooks. So in order to see what I'm talking about, if we were to go in and reconcile this bank account, I'm sorry, I don't wanna see the video. I'm just trying to, there we go. Click on get started. We don't need all of these prompts. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this left mon uh, menu. And just for, let's just say it's zero for now. And just for example purposes, we're just gonna to put today's date so you guys can see. I'm not really reconciling anything. Reconciling will be on a different drill. But here is the receive payment. No, that's not the receive payment. Sorry. Where is it? Oh, did I? I select checking. Oh, it's because <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, no, there's only four. Easy mistake. So we can uh, go ahead and select here. Deposits. And we'll see everything that we've received. Let me move this up. Sorry, all these prompts and QuickBooks. Just try, like, they need to get rid of this one. This one drives me crazy. I have to move a few things around so I can see it, guys. Um, and there it is. Amy's percent. This is the one that we just did together. So even though it wasn't on the bank statement, if we put anything in manually that has to do with this checking account, this one here that says checking, it might have a different word or um, name associated within your client's books, you guys just make sure you choose the right one. But it's here. Let me open it real quick. I clicked on it, clicked on edit, and this is the same one we just did. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. So now we're gonna move on to the next example. If you guys have any questions, again, make sure you're writing them down so that we can discuss them. If you're in any group coaching sessions with me, we can do that. Again, uh, if you need to do use your one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, if you have any of those, those are very rare still. And if you have some, please use them. Uh, if not, we can always do a quick 20-minute Zoom call for free with me. So give me just a second. Let's move back to our curriculum. <laughs> 